Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I'll show you how to make a faux leopard skin pattern in Illustrator. Before we get started with this tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're going to be doing. I'm going to show you how you can create a sort of faux leopard skin pattern like this one shown here in Illustrator. I'm also going to show you how you can recolor the pattern so that it looks different colors. This is an interesting pattern to make and it actually takes advantage of using the blob brush in Illustrator. So I think you're going to like working with this particular pattern. It's just an interesting pattern to create. To get started creating a faux leopard skin pattern, I'll choose File and then New. I'm creating a document that's 600 points by 600 points, but it doesn't really matter how big it is because we're working with vector graphics. And the color mode is RGB, so I'll click OK. I'm going to start with the blob brush here, which shares a toolbar position with the paintbrush tool. I'm going to deselect the fill color because I don't want a fill color, and I do want a stroke color because that's how the blob brush works. So with the blob brush in hand, I'm just going to size it using the square bracket case. And I'm just going to draw some shapes that can be used for my faux leopard skin pattern. I'm going to draw these shapes in roughly a sort of square area so that these can become my pattern in a minute. And this is going to be the basis for my pattern. I'm going to select all these pattern pieces and then I'm going to wrinkle them. So I'm going to click on the wrinkle tool here, which shares a toolbar position with the width tool. Now, if you double click on the wrinkle tool, you open its options dialog. I'm just going to reset this to its original settings, which is 100 points by 100 points for the brush. 50% intensity, and it's only going to be wrinkled in a vertical direction. That's fine for me, so I'm going to click OK. The reason why I only want to wrinkle in one direction is that this is going to give the pattern the look of being fur, because animal fur generally flows in just one direction. If you need to scale down your brush, then you could scale it down to a smaller size, but this one's working pretty well for me for this size pattern. So I'm just going to work on it until I get it sort of nicely wrinkled so it looks a little bit like fur. When I've done that, I'm going to press Control shift a Command shift a on the Mac to deselect my selection. I'm going to the Layers palette over here because I want to add a new layer. So I'm going to click here to add a new layer. I'm going to drag it below the layer I was working on and I'm going to lock that layer. That means that I can't make changes to that layer. And that's going to be a really good idea when I'm working with the blob brush. So let's go back to the blob brush. Let's go work with a stroke color. I'm just going to go and get a stroke color now. I'm thinking I might have a sort of pink that I want to use here in my color themes. And I think that's a pretty good color. Let's just double check and make sure we're still working on this layer. Again, with the blob brush, I'm going to start putting my color here. And it's going to fill in the sort of areas where I had these sort of hollow shapes. And because I'm working on a layer below these shapes, we're actually filling in behind the shape. Just means I don't have to be quite so careful because I'm filling behind a shape, not painting over the top of it. So you want to just sort of fill in your pattern a little bit here. Again, let's go and select all these shapes because the top black layer is locked down. We're only selecting the pink objects. Again, the wrinkle tool. And again, we're just going to go ahead and wrinkle this. And again, the tool's got the exact same settings as we were using before. So everything is wrinkling just in a vertical direction. Nothing is wrinkling horizontally. Control Shift A, Command Shift A to deselect the selections. If you need to make any changes at this stage, you can do so. Most of these shapes will still be independent, so you can sort of drag them around and just position them however you might like them to look. Let's unlock everything because we're going to actually create our pattern now. So I'm going to select all these shapes and choose Object, Pattern, Make. This is the default style of pattern, but we're going to select brick 
by row and a one half offset is a pretty good offset. Now I want to bring these pieces a little bit closer together so I'm going to make sure that this icon here is deselected so I can start reducing the height. And then look at perhaps reducing the width just a little bit. Now I can go in with my selection tool and select the pieces that I want to just move a little bit to realign them inside this pattern. Ultimately I don't want the pattern to be too obviously a pattern so I might want to move things apart just to make sure that I'm getting what looks like a good repeating pattern here and the things aren't sitting too close together. I'm a little bit concerned about this thing here and that's these shapes here. So I could move those a little further apart and that might be a bit better. You can also scale the shapes so if they're a little bit too big you can scale them down. You want to just keep an eye on what's happening out here because this is your pattern and it's affected by how things are positioned here. So you may want to move things around a little bit just to make sure that the pattern is looking good outside the area that you're working on. That's achieved by having your copy set to something like 5x5, five 5x7 by five, five by so that you can see the pattern around where you're working. This setting has nothing to do with the final pattern, it just has everything to do with what you're seeing on the screen. Now one of the things that I do want to do at this stage is to add another colour into the pattern. So I've just deselected everything. I'm going to switch so that I'm looking at my stroke colour and I'm going to select a light grey for my stroke colour. I'm going back to the blob brush and I'm going to fill in some of these areas just with a grey stroke. Now at the moment it's going in on top of everything. I'm not the slightest bit worried about that because in a minute I'm going to send it all behind. What I am interested in is just making sure that these colours are sort of filling in some areas of the pattern but that they're working well for the pattern that I've created. Again I'm going to select these pieces by clicking on the first one and shift click on all the other pieces that are inside this pattern piece. I think I've got them all selected now so I'm going back to my wrinkle tool. I'm going to wrinkle them too. I could have put the grey pieces in earlier before I actually came in to make the pattern but I just think that from experience I found that I make a better pattern by actually being able to see these grey pieces as I'm placing them in position. It seemed to me that I lost a bit of control when I created them to begin with. Now that these pieces are selected I'm going to send them behind everything else with Object Arrange and Send to Back. So I want them to be behind the black and pink areas on the pattern. I'm going to press Control Shift A to just deselect everything, take a look at my pattern and just make sure everything's looking the way I want it to look. Now I think I've got a bit too much grey here so I'm just going to take some of these pieces and just shrink them a little bit. It's all I need to do to limit the amount of grey I have in the pattern is to just make them a little bit smaller. a bit of trouble just selecting this one. And if I'm happy with that then I'm just going to click Done and I've created my pattern. I'm going to select all these objects and just move them out of the way because they're no longer required. And I'm going to create a rectangle the size of the artboard. And I'm going to fill it with my pattern by clicking on the fill and then going to the swatches palette and clicking on my pattern which is this object here. And now I can size it by choosing object transform scale. I want to make sure that preview is enabled so I can see what's happening now. I've got uniform set to 50% and what it's done is it's scaled both the rectangle or square and the pattern. I don't want it to change the rectangle or square so I'm going to disable transform objects but you can see that the pattern itself is being transformed and I'm just going to size it down to what I want it to be and I'll click OK. 
Now we've got our pattern piece and we've got our pattern. So if we wanted to use that over and over again, we'll just make sure that we save this as a new AI file. So we'd make sure we click here and choose Save Swatch Library as AI and then we'll go and create it as an AI file that we can use later on. But what I do want to do right now is to change the colors in this pattern. So I'm going to click here on New Color Group and click OK. And that creates a color group of the three colors that are in this pattern. And now I'll click here on Edit or Apply Color Group. Now what happens when you do that because you've got the gray is that you're remapping both the gray and the black to black. So you just want to click down here and just remap the gray to gray and then click on Edit. Click here to unlock the colors and you can start moving these colors around in the pattern and the pattern itself is going to change color when you do so. So we can make it bright pink or we can make it sort of green or yellow. We can work out whatever color it is that we want this pattern to be. We can click here on this one and adjust its color as well. So you get a little bit of flexibility here in being able to change the colors of your pattern. Once you've got your pattern looking the way that you want it to look, then you can create it as a new color group. I'm going to click here and choose new color group and click OK. And so now we've recolored our filled pattern and you'll see that there's a pattern piece here for our pattern. So that's how to create a sort of faux leopard skin pattern in Illustrator. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.